The following program is brought to you with limited commercial interruptions by Laid Plugins and the Cambridge School of Massage. we did a show here earlier tonight and some lady asked if my hair was natural I'm like where the hell would you go to get your hair done like this you know <laughs> it's not like I walk into a salon and go hey I want to look like Yanni on a bender can you make that happen for me <laughs> here's 110 bucks to make that dream come true man so. I wanted to mention this isn't really a Christmas tree it's a pot plant I grew earlier and uh, <laughs> This is a medicinal marijuana state, although uh, I have been using the generic equivalent for years, so, yeah. All right, wow. Thank you, left side of the room. Apparently, pot smokers over there. Uh, I am guessing Republicans over there, man. I don't know. I, <laughs> I am. I'm a registered Republican because I just like showing up to conventions and freaking them out. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I, uh, I'm pro-life, let's kill a Democrat. What do you say, you know? <laughs> and here's what I want to say about those pro-life people, man. If you're an embryo, they've got your back. But uh, once you step out of the vagina, you're on your own, pretty much, you know? <laughs> right, wow, that was a left side of the room joke if ever there was one. Sorry over here, but I'll, I'll get to some politics later, I guess, I don't know. I was, I was raised by hippies and my mom sent me to school every day with a Jimi Hendrix lunchbox and all the kids made fun of me till they tried one of my brownies. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah, hey. Uh, <laughs> let's just say I could pretty much trade my lunch for anything after that, man. I was... Anyway, I do, I travel all over the country, you know, and I have a lot of time to kill during the days, so I like to make my own fun, because uh, I work nights, and so during the days I go to job interviews I'm not qualified for, just looking like this, you know. <laughs> Boss sees me and is like, make this guy pee in a cup, I know he did something, man. <laughs> sure, that made the Republicans laugh there, man. They're like, yeah, I'll bet he's done all kinds of crazy stuff. Man. Some of those drug tests are weird. They're like written exams, you know? It's like you're on a westbound bus headed from Chicago at 40 miles an hour. How many dubs do you smoke by the time you make it to Des Moines? <laughs> All of them was my answer. I'm like, hey. People, listen. Stop watching the news. It's not good for you. Watch the commercials instead. I'm not saying anything else right now. So let's, uh, can we go to a commercial or back to the studio or, or something, please? You know, honey, our life together has never been better. I bet it's the new laid plugins. Oh, come on, honey. No, seriously, think about it. What are the only things that we've changed around here in the past few months? I, um, I stopped going to church. No, silly. Seriously, the only thing that we changed around here is the laid plugins. I read that they're new and improved. She's right! Our research and development teams have added heat activated, mood altering, airborne drugs to each laid plugin. How many of these things do we have left? We better uh. go to the store. Our lives are so much better now that we got laid. I am, I am easily confused. I mean, you could probably tell that by looking at me, but uh, I am, I'm easily confused. One time, uh, you know, I, I uh, smoked a bong and faced the wrong way while I was watching TV and watched my couch for like 30 minutes, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I have got to get one of those converter boxes, man. I, 
All I'm picking up here is the fabric channel, and wow. I am really tired of watching Naga Hide, I'll tell you that. Boy, that's for sure. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cracking myself up because I forget this shit and then I hear it again. I'm like, whoa, yeah. I think I'm writing new stuff. I am just remembering, you know. But anyway, I wanted to talk about President Obama a little bit, man. He is bailing out everybody, the motor companies, health care, banks, and the other insurance. I'm like, where the hell is my economic stimulus package, you know? Because I have been spending irresponsibly for years. And I don't need 700 billion either, man. 35 grand, and I am back down to square one. You know, it's like... <laughs> Make it 40, and I'll get my weird eye fix, because I, uh, I know, I... I do, I have a crazy ass eye that goes that way. <laughs> sure, that's funny to you guys, but. Yeah, this eye goes this way and this eye is straight, you know? I'm not saying this eye is gay, but this eye is straight, so. This eye wants to marry somebody else's eye, and I'm like, hey, you cannot do that in this state, you know? We just started buying liquor on Sundays like a year ago here, man. We're... And same-sex marriage was legal in California for a while, which explains why God lit the entire state on fire. Uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> wow. There you go, Republicans. There you go. We interrupt this program to bring you a special edition of American Roundtable. Good morning and welcome to another edition of American Roundtable. Whatever happened to change? Was it just campaign rhetoric or is change a reality? Joining us today at the American Roundtable is Mike Shinwell, Tea Party candidate for the governor of East Virginia. Lisa Schaefer is a Republican Party strategist and uh, whose new book is uh, America is Always Right and Liberals Are Always Wrong, currently available everywhere. Deborah Roth is our veteran White House correspondent. And of course, Hippie Man, stand-up comic and third-party candidate, currently running for every available political office in the United States. But let's start with Lisa. Lisa, are we experiencing change? We are, Ralph. But at what cost? We have mortgaged our children's future. Homosexuality has threatened the sanctity of marriage. Our borders are no longer secure. Activist judges have infiltrated our courts. The family system has been scrapped. And terrorists, they don't like our freedom. So, yes, change has come to America, all right, and it's a four-letter word. Hmm, and, and what is that four-letter word, Lisa? Well, I don't mean it literally. What I mean is that change has a new name. It's a metaphor. What Lisa fails to mention is that the Republican Party's soft stance on, uh, on pro-life and family values has really eroded uh, Americans' uh, uh, values. What? Look, you Mike, know? what the Republican Would you Party has started... Okay. Yeah, my turn. Mike. Okay. So, well, well uh, uh, I think you can't get more Republican than, uh, let's say, Dick Cheney. Hmm? And his daughter is a lesbian. <laughs> no Mike, offense. Mike, you cannot. No, where was the where was the parenting there, huh? You know, there has to be it's, uh, some accountability, all right? Um, but let's go to Deborah. Deborah, you've been the White House correspondent for the past six years. And uh, what is different about this administration? Well, the food is much better. Uh, that's it? Well, that and we can go out back and smoke cigarettes. Hey, I smoked pot on the roof of the White House with Willie Nelson during the Carter administration. Now, see, that's what's wrong with America. Uh-huh. Democrats are doing nothing but getting high instead of taking care of the nation's business. We weren't getting high, Lisa. The weed sucked back then, man. Carter had swag. Okay. Well, we'll get to you in a minute there, hippie man. Uh, Deborah, back to you. What has changed 
in the past six years politically. Oh, I, I don't pay attention to politics. You're the White House correspondent for a major television network, and you don't pay attention to politics? Look, Ralph, I read over and over and over again whatever it is they put in front of me on that teleprompter. If I were to pay attention to what I was reading, I'd be so damn depressed I don't know what I would do. I don't understand. You make it look so convincing. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I pretend I'm doing the weather. And I don't know what else to tell you, but I just read what I'm supposed to read, do what I'm supposed to do, and those guys give me a check so I can put a roof over my kid's head. Do, do you vote? Yes, I vote. Thank God. Well, the thing is that I, I do tend to get a little tipsy on those voting evenings, and, um, well, I find that I vote for the ones that have the funny names, you know? I mean, and that's how I ended up voting for Bush. Both times! That's wrong. Hey, I voted for your guy. What's the problem? Okay, Deborah. Well, now let's go to the longest seated member of the American Roundtable, Hippie Man. Hippie Man, has America changed? You know, Ralph, nothing has changed. I mean, just listen to Mike and Lisa. They're busy blaming each other and the Democrats for all the problems, but yet I haven't heard one solution out of either one of them. Well, all we've heard out of you is that you smoke pot. Mm. What do you plan to do to help the country? Well, Lisa, since you asked, I would start with Afghanistan. I mean, we need to get our troops home, you know? And, and now we have all this uh, 12 million illegal immigrants. I would take the illegal immigrants, send them over to Afghanistan, give each one of them a shovel, and tell them, hit anybody who doesn't have a damn shovel. That'd be the end of the war pretty much right there. And we would have solved immigration, gotten our troops home, and open up 12 million low-paying jobs that I'm pretty sure Americans would work right now since the economy is in the dumper. Mm, that will never happen. Well, Lisa, you asked me what I'd do, and that's what I would do. Yes, but Hippie Man, the question still remains. Has change come to America? You know, Ralph, change is, is like Bush. And I'm not talking about the former President Bush. I'm talking about a big bush that's overgrown, and your HOA makes you trim that bush. That's what our bureaucracy has become, an overgrown bush. It's like a, a simile or a metaphor. And it's our fault, because we're the ones who voted in that bureaucracy. I believe that's a simile. It's a metaphor. That's a simile. You're just saying that because I said metaphor. Will you get over yourself? Does anybody have any more coffee? Oh, Why the hell are we getting all uptight about this, man? Uh, guys, I mean, you know what? This whole thing. All right, everyone, we're going to continue this in the green room. And join us next time on American Roundtable. That's what's wrong with You're playing as a truth. No, no, I don't think it's Anyway, I was. I was talking about politics earlier. You know, and I don't. I don't have faith in politicians at all, man. So I came up with my own plan uh, for America, and I call it Hippie Man's Plan for America. And I put it on these index cards, which is cool, because it also has my recipe for brownies on there, which is, you know, yeah, quite frankly, how I came up with the plan. But uh, <laughs> here's how it works. You know, I just take, <clears throat> excuse me, while I'm <clears throat> coughing up a hit from 1978 there or something, I don't know. <laughs> Hell of a time for that to happen, I'll tell you. But no, here's how it works. I just take topics like right out of, you know, the headlines like energy, you know, and I think we all agree the big problem is oil. And it's not that we need to conserve it. We need to use it all up because they are not going to do shit until it's gone, you know. So knowing that, I bought a Hummer and I put it up on blocks and I just run it 24-7, man. <laughs> and I'm doing it on stolen credit cards, so it's no skin on my ass, you know what I mean? Uh, next up is No Child Left Behind. I'm thinking we should leave a couple back. Uh, what about the ones that have been eating lead paint off the Disney toys? They're not going to be able to keep up with the rest of the group, are they? Uh, next up, you know, is freedom of religion. And we would have freedom of religion in Hippie Man's Plan for America. Because I do, man. I believe in freedom of religion. And I think you should worship however you like to worship. Like, I choose to worship this empty beer bottle I found in a vacant lot, you know? <laughs> And I came back the next day and it was full. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a miracle, you know. I know, yeah. Oh, don't get ahead of me, you know. Then I tasted the beer and I was like, wow, this tastes like bumpy. And uh, I looked at the label and sure enough, it was a Coors, so. <laughs> Hell
health care, man. I mean, I don't have health care. I do sort of at the grocery store. I can go and get my blood pressure checked. That's pretty much my benefit back. <laughs> But it is a PPO, so I can go to any grocery store across the country, yeah. <laughs> My copay is a nickel. Uh, but you know, I did. I found a doctor who works at my local grocery store in the deli, you know? So, uh, yeah, he's a deli doctor. It's kind of like one-stop shopping because he's wearing those weird plastic gloves. Uh, it's like, hey, I'd like a pound of provolone and a prostate check if you don't mind. I learned I always order the cheese first on that transaction, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, you guys are a fun crowd, and I do want to be honest up here tonight. Uh, I have smoked pot a time or two. <laughs> yeah. My whole thing was I never exhaled. Uh, <laughs> you know that's some good shit when you forget to breathe, man. I thought I was on the space shuttle fixing a tile, and <laughs> turns out I was just in my shower pulling on a loose piece of cock, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's C-A-U-L-K for those of you playing the home game. <laughs> I know you Republicans went to a dick joke right away, but. You know, I wanted to mention too, I got down here earlier today and I bought a CD and the clerk said to me, would you like a bag with that? And I'm like, yeah, could you, uh, could you hook me up? You know, and I'm like, I'm like, this really is Best Buy, you know. Like I say, I'm easily confused. I get up in the morning, see my reflection in the mirror. I'm like, wow, that is one ugly looking chick right there. I'll tell you that, boy. I am never drinking Jaeger again. I, I apparently picked up a Ukrainian pole vault or something, I don't know. Our kids are gonna be ugly because she's got a better mustache than me and, and a weird ass eye, but it's on the other side. Because I'm in a mirror, all right? <laughs> In just three months, I became a certified massage therapist at the Cambridge School of Massage. And with the help of Cambridge's job placement program, I'll soon be working at a doctor's office, a new age healing center, or the exciting world of sexual massage. By simply placing a few small ads in my local newspaper, I've created a lucrative and rewarding career in one of the fastest growing segments of massage therapy. You'll meet interesting new people and learn secret massage techniques that have been passed down for generations. Massage therapy isn't for everyone, but if you don't mind getting your hands dirty and like making money, call 1-800-555-1222 today. Private lessons available. Mom, we're shooting a commercial. You know what? I don't care about the news anymore. I'm into dolphins now. Let's go to Hibby Man in the studio. Here's something else I like to do for fun. You know, when I'm on the road, I will sneak into a mall and pretend like I'm one of those people at the mall asking questions, you know? So I'll go up to people and say, hey, can I ask you a couple of questions? Uh, do you have any weed? <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I gotta... <laughs> I gotta ask, it's here on the clipboard and man. My boss is a real stickler, I'll tell you. <laughs> and I have. I've been a comic for, gosh, uh, like 30 years almost, and I finally had to get a day job. I, uh, I have a... <laughs> I do. I have a paper route. Uh, <laughs> once a week, I deliver zigzags to all of my friends. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, after a stop, couple stops on that route, you don't care if the papers are in the porch anymore, you know. So, so anyway, don't you think if there were a superhero character by the name of Hippie Man that I should be the guy? Yeah, yeah thanks. I could hear the announcer now. Faster than a track star on steroids, more powerful than a Hoover Upright, able to leap small children in a single bound. Look, over there in the corner, passed out. It's Hippie Man. <laughs> Somebody yell, Hippie Man, come quick. I'll be right there.
Hippie man hurt himself when he was flying there. <laughs> Don't be looking down here. That is one of the few superhero powers I have. I can <laughs> tell when people are checking out Hippie Man's package and uh, <laughs> tell by the way you're laughing, you're still looking down there. <laughs> wow, it's gonna be time for Woodstock in just a minute here. <laughs> Hold on a second, I have to pick up my stuff. I cannot tell you how many times I've left an apartment like this, but a lot. You know, it's like, hey, okay. Well, I am gonna get going. I'm gonna go walk along Sheridan and see what happens. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> see me hitchhike and pick me up. But let's all do the Hippie Man Pledge. Everybody make a peace sign, repeat after me. I, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep supporting live comedy. See you later. Take care.